Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to a quick guide on how to use the Vassal board game engine to play Battlestar Galactica. Now, I'm making this video mostly because I want to be playing a game of this soon, and I want to have an instructional video out for my players, but it might be something that's generally applicable to a whole lot of people. So Vassal is an open source board game engine. It's a general purpose board game engine. It can basically simulate any board game. Uh, and it does that because it doesn't really implement the rules directly. It just lets you move things around on a virtual sort of tabletop while you play the rules appropriately on your own. So you can go to vassalengine.org, you'll get to this web page, you can download it. it, the link shows right now is for Windows, because I'm on Windows, but as you can see it's available for basically any platform, I have tried it on the Mac OS, it works great, I haven't played it on Linux, but it is open source in Java, and I'm sure it probably works great on all the things. Now, downloading the game by itself, or downloading Vassal by itself, just gives you like kind of an executable, and you can install it, and then if you open it up, you more or less just get a blank window, and it does prompt you to download a module for a game. You can also technically create your own modules, but that's way beyond the scope of this video. Anyway, let's close that out. So, modules. You can see on the website here we've got links for modules, and you're gonna have to click on that, and then you can see there's gargantuan list of games that are supported by the Vassal game engine. And this list here is actually just goes to B. So you've got, you know, C through Z that is not even shown on this list here. It's just massive. Now, for our purposes, what you're going to want to do is go down to the right-hand side and find the Battlestar Galactica board game module right over here. If we click that, we'll bring come up to the, the main page for it. There are also... Um, sort of sub modules over here for the expansions. Um, you can also see the links on the front page over here, but if you click on one of them, it just points you to, hey, just go to this other thing instead. So we're gonna go there. Anyway, uh, the Battlestar Galactica module comes in two flavors, the old 1.5.6, which is for an older version of the Vassal engine, and the graphics aren't quite as nice, and then the new 2.0, which works with the new Vassal engine. The only one you need to play the base game is this one here, Battlestar Galactica FFG 2.0 VMod. That's the Vassal module. Everything else are module expansions for the different sub rule sets. Uh, so if you want to use those, or if we're going to be using them in whatever game you end up playing, you're gonna to wanna to download those and add those in. But, so you're gonna download all those, so what you're gonna do, after you've installed the Vassal engine, and you can run it once, but you'll notice on my computer here, the VMOD file is is linked to the thing. So if I double click on it, it automatically starts loading that module. I could have also gone file open and found it that way. So if you get any problems, just do that. So to load that module, it'll process all of the images and it'll offer the start wizard the very first time. Let's just say I cancel out of this for the sake of argument. I'm gonna cancel out and I'm gonna close that window that opens up. In fact, I'll close Vassal completely. If I reopen Vassal, this module is still loaded into the system. It's still available in the list, which is very handy. If you did want to play one of the expansion modules, at this point you can click on this, you right click on it, sorry, and then you can go add extension. This is how you add the extensions to Battlestar Galactica. For example, if you want to play with the Cylon Fleet rule system, for example, you could do that. But for, for my players, for the game we're about to play, we're just going to use the vanilla Battlestar Galactica uh, interface over here. Now, if, you, if you're not one of my players, this game is awesome. It's one of my favorite board games like ever made. It's fantastic. It's collaborative. If you haven't watched Battlestar Galactica, this is like vaguely spoilery, but not really. I mean, it's just like the first episode kind of level of spoilers, which is not much. The television show is fantastic. I definitely recommend it to most anyone. But uh, the board game is, a, is, is just it's stunning. It gives you all the, the sort of sense of like, Oh, the barest glimmer of survival, plus just the treachery of the fact that one of the people in your midst is is a traitor. They're they're an evil robot bent on killing everyone, but they look like everyone else. So it's pretty awesome. Anyway, once we uh, once we load this up again, again we get this sort of wizard screen. We could disable this to not get this wizard screen, but it seems sensible. Uh, we can start a new game offline. We can go looking for a game online or we can load a saved game. Now, in, in practice, these actually don't really, they all kind of lead you to the same place. I'm gonna start in the offline mode, and then we will talk about how to go online at that point. So, I'll just hit next. It'll ask me which side to join in on. So I'm gonna jump in as player one. Subsequent players, well, this actually won't matter too much um, because I will be setting up the game to start off with, but you can jump into different player slots, which makes more sense in games where it's like, oh, Axis versus Allies or different countries or that sort of thing. You can also join as an observer if you just want to watch. But yeah, I'll go ahead and be player one. And that will load up the actual game board over here. Literally, an actual scan of the actual game board from the game, but then it's got a whole bunch of extra little buttons and doodads and widgets. If you take a look at the file menu, 
you'll notice you can save the game at this point. So if you've played for an hour and then someone has to go because there's an emergency, you can save the game as is and then later on reload it and you will be able to continue from exactly where you left off, which is a really nice little feature. You can even play this by email if you want. You can you start these log files and end the log files and you send the log files to someone else and then you do the load continuation and it'll literally replay everything that's happened step by step. It's actually kind of cool, but not really applicable to our lesson here. So the game itself, as I said, the Vassal Engine doesn't necessarily know how to play Battlestar Galactica. All it presents is the ability to sort of manipulate things on the board. Like if I grab one of these Vipers, I can drag it into space and put it there. And it'll actually tell you in the log that, hey, such and such a player moved this thing. Also where they moved it to. Like if I do something really weird, which doesn't make sense, but let's say I park it in the research lab, it'll say it's in the research lab. I mean, that's not a legal move, but the game doesn't care. It just lets you move things. It also has right click menus on most things. So I can right click on this Viper and return it to the reserves. It'll go right back in the box, or I could right click on it and put it in the damaged. I could also put it as destroyed, which just puts sort of a like a fireball icon on top of it to show that it's been destroyed at that point. But it leaves on the board. I could also tag, toggle it back by flipping that. There you go. Um, it's got these dials, which is kind of cool. You can uh, increase or decrease. That's all there is to it. Not, not a whole lot complicated. That's again with the right mouse button. We can, you know, move these centurion places on the boarding party and it'll say where it is. Uh, but again, we could technically throw it anywhere. None of this makes any sense other than there or say off the board. Some of these things are decks like these damage tokens. If I grab say, you know, the top two like that, and let's say I put this food damage token back on here and then draw another one. It's, it's a randomized deck. Every time you pull something off, it'll give you something random, but it's still just got the what eight options. There you go. The eight options are now there. And if I right click on all these, uh, no, not move to game box. I want to repair damage, repair damage. Uh, yeah, okay. It's weird that it says that. Here, we'll just drag it up over there. There, get rid of it. But it, so it understands randomized decks like that, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, and that, that's, you know, drop some raiders, pull them off. Easy peasy. Uh, we've got our skill decks down here. Hopefully, if you haven't played the Battlestar Galactica board game, none of this will necessarily make sense. Technically, they do have the built-in rules in here, but it's mostly like reference charts. The idea is hopefully you have purchased and owned the game yourself, uh, and so you know how to play rather than doing this, or maybe you're playing with someone who's experienced, like they know the game, they own the game, for example. And it is one of my very favorite games to play in person. I've got the base game and all three expansions, and they're just oh, absolutely lovely. Um, so yeah, we've got some more cards here. We could technically flip up a skill card by just dragging it onto the table and then I can right click on it and click flip, you know, sure. You're just, again, you're interacting with something very physical and we can discard it. It goes into the pile. Uh, we can shuffle it back in. We can shuffle the whole thing. We can add cards, destiny X, all kinds of things. You just, you point at things, right click on them and they do things that are usually, um, properly contextual for whatever you're doing. I feel that the board game over here is relatively self-explanatory. I like the die. We got the dice, we can uh, right click on it and roll it. Get some sound effects, it's very exciting. There's also a shortcut button up top here to roll the die. Excellent, very interesting. All right, so the more complicated bits are some of these extra buttons over here. Actually, let's go ahead and start from left to right. Uh, the leftmost thing is to undo, pretty clear, I guess. Uh, this button here is just to play through a, a play by email file, basically. So we're not gonna be dealing with that. The next one is to show and hide the server controls. If we click on that, we get another little sort of pull-out menu over here. Um, this first button, you can right-click and change what server type you're using. We're going to leave it on legacy server, which seems to work perfectly fine as far as I can tell. Next button is connect. If we do that, we'll connect up to the server. Oh, damn, a second ago, there's actually other people in here and other games going on. Kind of sucks that there's, I'm not going to be able to show that off. But so you connect up to the main server and you might see other people in here. You might see other games going on. Any games you see here will be the same games or games that use the same module that you're currently using. So they'd be other Battlestar Galactica games, for example. Usually people will make private rooms and so on and so forth. You can flag yourself as, hey, I'm looking for a game or I'm not. You can say, hey, I'm away from the keyboard or I'm back. And you can uh, check and post personal messages to other people that happen to be connected to the server, which doesn't come up very much. And you can get some, what is this, server connection info, blah, blah, blah. Uh, which actually will show you all the different games and how many people are connected to this different room. So, wow, there's 20 people in the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game. Really? And 25 people in War Machines and Hordes Mark II. I don't even know what that is. 
pretty much, and that's people playing currently, and then we can get stats for the last day, week, or month as well. It is a relatively active community, although usually you're probably going to be playing with people that you know, um, maybe not in real life, but at least on the internet. So we're going to go ahead and start a new game. I'm going to call this one the, uh, the test game, for example, and hit enter. It creates a test game. It automatically moves me into that room over here. Now, I want this to be a private game, so I'm going to right-click on test game and lock the room. There, the room is now locked. Now, the way that I would bring people into here is people who are, say, in the main room, I could right click on their name and I could choose invite. It's grayed out because I'm clicking on myself, but I could invite people into my room at that point, and that's how we would set up this sort of private room. Now, at this point, we're kind of sort of working. Once you're in the same room, we can, uh, we can type to each other. Or, of course, you'd be probably using voice chat or, or something like that. Now, there is one little weirdness, and that at this point, once we're in the same room, if I make a move, if I drop a Centurion, say, over here, this line should get posted in your log, and the Centurion should actually move to this place. The weirdness can come up in that if I had things already on the board when you connected, let's say I put some Cylon Raiders here, and then you joined the room, you wouldn't see these Cylon Raiders here because you only see sort of what changes happen to the board, not what the board was like when you joined the room. And the way you resolve that is by simply clicking on someone's name or right clicking and choosing synchronize. So usually everyone should synchronize to the person who created the room. So in this case, everyone should synchronize to me. It would update their board to be perfectly in sync with, uh, with what I have. And there you go. Every now and again, you might get like weird network issues or lag out or disconnect temporarily or something like that which might force you to, again, right-click and synchronize again. If ever things get kind of wonky, just do that. It'll usually sort things out. So um, so there you go. And at that point, we are now playing on the same game board. If one of us moves the raider, everyone will see that happen, just like you're playing at a real-life table. So let's talk about these other buttons. Um, so that is the Show Hide Server Controls button. You can also retire from the game and be like, well, I'm done. GG. We got this pieces button, which is kind of interesting in that it brings up with another sort of flyaway uh, little menu over here. And it's got a list of various tokens, character tokens, objective cards, and title cards that can be pulled down. Um, you can click here to see, say, the two different title cards. But then if you want to drop one on the board for any reason, you just drop it on the board. There you go. And then you can also um, just delete it from the board at that point. I mean, they're still in here. I think you could actually pull multiple character copies of the president card out if you wanted to, even though it makes no sense at all. So we're going to do that. Uh, objective card. So we would actually start the game probably by dropping the objective card here. If we're playing with expansions, there may be, there are different ex uh, objective cards. New Caprica, uh, the Ionian Nebula, and uh, Earth become different options. But, you know, we in the base game, you just play with Cobalt. So we drop that down, for example, there. And the character cards. So um, these are the actual tokens that show up on the board. So, for example, if I was going to play as William Adama, and uh, Adama starts, I think, in the Admiral's Quarters, I could drag it out there. So that would be me. And also... Adama starts as the Admiral. If you right-click on the card, you get lots of different options that you can choose from. Like, I can flag that, hey, I've got the initiative. It's currently my turn, for example. I'm also the Admiral, so we've got that going on there. Um, I can change the label, which is quite handy. Quill 18, so everyone remembers that, hey, Quill 18 is playing as William Adama. I've got nukes. Um... Two nukes is what I would start off at the start of the game. And, you know, whether we use the uh, the once per game ability and should we flag that this person is a Cylon, for example. Uh, all those sorts of things. And we can just delete the card and you can still find it there. Again, we could drag out more copies of this, but that would make no sense whatsoever. So um, delete that guy back on there. And then, yeah, so different tokens. And these don't really do much other than, yeah, you drag them onto the board. And sometimes there's a right click menu that is contextual. Uh, so that is the uh, that is the pieces screen. Then there's the die roller. It does put the note in the log, but it actually changes the graphic over here, which I think is really cool. This characters button brings up all the character cards in the game divided by category. Again, we're playing the base game, so there's just three in each category plus one support. No Cylon leaders. And the way most people play this is on the side of the board over here. They will put it just to the side of the board. Say, okay, there's there's a William Adama in the game. So we know that Adama is in the game. And then, you know, someone else decides that they're going to be playing as, say, uh, Starbuck. And our third player, for example, decides they're going to be playing as, uh, I know, Gaius Baltar. We're going to drop Gaius Baltar down there. So we've got, you know, we remember that uh, all three of these people are in the game. You can mouse over. They're quite small normally. You can zoom in with these buttons over here. But if you mouse over a card, it'll usually just 
pop things up and to be a little bit bigger, which is quite handy. Uh, one thing we might want to do, for example, is just shove this over a little further to the right and then go back to the pieces card and grab those titles and put the president next to Baltar, which is a scary proposition, and the admiral next to Adama over there so that, you know, we remember who's who. Again, I've got a little token on there, which we may or may not want to use, or we can use the cards or whatever the heck we want to do. That is totally fine. Uh, let's hide the, t uh, the uh, pieces again. So that was the character one. The rules button brings up this little handy dandy chart with the shortcut of rules, especially like the setup. Most of the setup is already in place, um, but I like... Does the setup not explain where the starting enemies are? Mm, maybe it doesn't. Well, I'll have to figure out where that is. Anyway, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but it's, it's handy little uh, rules reference right in here. Um, game box. If at any point you sort of right-click on something and get rid of it completely. Uh, destroyed? Nope, it doesn't do that. Certain things, every now and again, you might discard a card completely. It says remove the card from the game. Well, if you remove the card from the game, it'll show up here in the game box. So for any reason, you know, something went wrong, we could always just drop it back into the... Um, into the gameplay at that point and have access to it again, but it's mostly just a little placeholder. The players list is interesting because the players here, this area here is basically your personal hand. For example, at the uh, the start of the game, um, I would have, let's say I'm, I'm the first player, I have to draw three leadership and two tactics cards. Well, my cards are down here. So leadership, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say draw, 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 draw. You can see in the quote, I've drawn a bunch of cards. Well, where are they? Well, if I go players, player one, here they are. Here are my personal cards. Now, I don't believe any other player can see what is going on in here. Or if they can, maybe it's face down. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm hoping that's, that's the case. I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. So I've got my personal cards in here. I can click on a card. I can add cards to skill checks. I can flip them over, although that's not really important here. I can pass the card to another player, which I might have to do for various reasons, or I can just discard it, and if I do, it will discard into the correct pile. If I want to play the card, probably the best thing to do is just to like just drop it on the table and say, hey guys, I'm playing this thing here. And then once you're done with it, just discard it to the pile as well. Right? Easy peasy. This will also become a little bit more notable when we get to the next category here, cards. So this is all the different decks of cards in the game that are not just sitting on the board. For example, um, the loyalty cards. If I click here, at the beginning of the game, we have to construct the loyalty deck to find out who's human and who's a Cylon. Uh, we're playing, in this example here, say a three-player game. So in a three-player game, there's one Cylon and five, you are not a Cylon card. So we'll go ahead and add the Cylon, shuffle into the loyalty deck, and then one, whoops, not the sympathizer. Oh. I did that wrong. Whatever, it's fine. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. So now there's a deck. Technically, there's a sympathizer card, which there shouldn't be. That, sorry, misclick. And then, at the, so now this is a totally shuffled loyalty deck. One of these cards is a Cylon card. So I'm going to right-click on this and draw to hand. Ah! Oh. I am not a Cylon. Whew, that's a relief. Although, of course, someone else in the game will be. Maybe not yet. Maybe not until the sleeper phase, but there you have it. So the loyalty cards are pretty uh, pretty clear. So again, we'd keep that in our own personal hand. If for some reason uh, we would need to reveal this to a player, then you can pass this card to a player so that they could see it and then pass it back to you. Um, and also, if you needed to reveal it publicly, publicly, you could just drop it onto the table, for example, and then go ahead and put it back in your hand. That would be totally fine. So what other cards are here? There's the crisis cards. So the crisis cards, of course, you have to do at the end of every turn. If, if it's at the end of your turn and you're supposed to play a crisis card, well, then you just take it. You can actually drop it here at the current crisis spot. Just makes it really clear exactly what we're dealing with. Um, and then when you're done, you can discard it. This is just the discard pile. And you could shove a bunch of cards into the discard pile if you want. You put it here. Again, you can put the cards anywhere you want. doesn't make a difference. Let's just clean this up and discard these cards clean up our mess. And we're going to do that. Now, if you're playing a character who has the ability to say, draw two crisis cards and pick one and do something, then we can do that too. I can go draw to hand, draw to hand. It will let everyone know I've drawn a couple of crisis cards. And if I go into my hand, I will see what they are. Now, some, so some characters have the ability to say, draw two, choose one and put it at the bottom of the deck. So I'm going to do that with rescue Caprica survivors. I'm going to put it at the bottom of the deck here. And then this other one, I will play the crisis. 
And if I play the crisis, it will show up in that spot right over there. And then we can discard it. Easy, right? Good stuff. And then if we needed to, I could um, return all the cards to the deck and then give it a good shuffle at that point. And that would be totally fine there. Crisis cards. Again, everything is just very physical. Imagine you were playing this in real life. That's all you need to do. Uh, we've got our destination card, so we can like, look, okay, we've gone to a Tillium planet. Great. There's a discard pile. This is the only thing that I don't get. Like, do you keep your destination cards piled up here? Well, how do you keep track of what our total number is? I feel like there's there's something I'm missing here in terms of like keeping count. I guess what we'd probably do, sometimes you do discard stuff. So this would be discarded things. I guess we would leave our pile of destinations here. And if we need to count them up, we just like spread them out. Okay, so we're currently at three. Good. Let's just remember that we're at three or some damn thing. There, there might be a better way. I'll see if I can figure something out. So that's destinations. We've got quorum cards. It works very similar to, say, the um, the crisis cards. If you're the president, you get to draw the, the quorum cards into your hand. Uh, and then you can, from your hand, you can... Uh, you can play them. I basically to play this card, I guess you just drop it on the table and say, "Hey, I'm doing this thing," and then we are discarding it. Because yeah, there you go. Um, and then super crisis cards. This is if you're revealed as a Cylon, you would take one of these super crisis cards into your hand. Not very exciting. This boards button doesn't do anything for us because we're playing the vanilla Battlestar Galactica game, which only has one game board here, including the. Uh, the Colonial One and Cylon locations. But if we were playing with expansions, there might be a couple of different game boards to deal with, like the Cylon Fleet and the um, uh, the Rebel Base Star and then Demetrius and uh, New Caprica and all kinds of different things like that. So, But we don't have to do that. There's also the Situation button here, which mostly just keeps track of what everyone has. So, for example, this would be the way to see um, what, you know, player one, how many skill cards this player one have in his or her hand, how many loyalty cards they holding, how many quorum cards, and so on and so forth. Because you can't, ideally, I'm assuming you cannot actually look at their hand. Uh, and this would at least give you counts, because you're supposed to know what people's count of items are. So we've got that. Uh, we've got a built-in screenshot option, which is kind of neat. And I actually don't know what that, oh, this is like the normal button as opposed to zoom button. I actually don't know what this button does. There's no tooltip for it. Let's pretend it doesn't exist. Awesome. Anyway, I think that's just about all you need to know for how you can use the Vassal engine to play Battlestar Galactica board game online, um, which I think is a great board game. It's one of my favorites. Again, this doesn't necessarily teach you how to play the game, although you could potentially make your way through the rules. Listen, it's a great game. Buy a copy. And then if you want to play online, use this at that point. Anyway, that is uh, it for this video. Again, it's mostly intended to be instructional for my own players, but uh, stay tuned potentially for more board game content. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.